number 5. Pseudo Regalia is a Metroidvania inspired by games of the N64 and PS1 era. Despite that, the main developer Ritzler decided to use Unreal Engine 5 for this project and teamed up with his friend Matt that helped out with level design and textures. The initial version, which is still available on itch.io, was created within three weeks for the Metroidvania Month 19 game jam, which it ended up winning and getting the first place. They then went on to creating an extended commercial version for Steam, which took roughly four months to develop and was met with an overwhelmingly positive response. It's also currently sitting at an estimated net revenue of over $1 million, which is almost unheard of for an indie game of this scope. But of course, this success didn't happen overnight, and the self-taught developer Rizzler has been working on many different platforms before to grow and get to this point. Especially Blazing Dynamo on their HIO page looks like it has a lot in common with Studio Regalia, featuring many different abilities that can be used for platforming. Responsive platforming that allows for creative and open-ended exploration through the many different abilities is also what made Studio Regalia a fan favorite. It also performs extremely well on both PC and the Steam Deck, and managed to have a rather small download size of only 255 megabytes. Looking through the files though, the game comes with the Open Image Denoise DLL, which could be removed to make the game even 50 megabytes lighter. And I only mention this because many people are afraid of using Unreal Engine for smaller game gem type projects, believing there'll be many gigabytes large, which just isn't true. All in all, I believe this is an amazing example that Unreal Engine can successfully be used for various art styles and genres, but also that the indie dev dream is still alive and kicking. Number 4. The Vagrant is a 2D action adventure inspired by titles such as Odin Sphere and Dragon's Crown, created with Unreal Engine 4. I actually talked to their team lead Candlin a long time ago for another video, and he was happy to share some insightful information and some in-development footage of the Vagrant. In the beginning, they created their characters drawing frame-by-frame -frame animations and exporting them as sprite sheets to use in Unreal. However, throughout development, they moved on to using a bone-based approach through a software called Creature but they would only use this for enemies and bosses, while the player character would still use the traditional method. Creature does provide an SDK that works with Unreal Engine, however they made a few adjustments to the code to improve the workflow and performance. He also mentions how they use GAS, the gameplay ability system, for combat interactions. But outside of these two things, they were using Blueprint Visual Scripting for 99% of the implementation. The Vagrant currently sits at an estimated net revenue of over $450,000 for the Steam version alone, but it's also available on the Switch, PS4 and the Xbox consoles. I think this game showcases that not only can you make 2D games in Unreal, but you can also reach financial success doing so even with a small team. On a side note, two asset packs with backgrounds from the Vagrant got added to the permanently free collection on the Unreal Engine Marketplace, or now FAB, making them available to use in your own games. Currently, OTK Games are working on Detained Too Good for School, which I'm definitely looking forward to as a big beat em up fan, and I intend to feature it once it releases. Number 3 Dragon Quest 3 HD 2D Remake is the latest Square Enix published HD 2D game using Unreal Engine. Even though UE 5.5 released around the same time as this game, it actually still uses UE 4.27. And my guess is that the custom tools created by Acquire and other development partners over the years are one of the reasons, since Octopath Traveler 2 for example was also made with UE 4.27. When the first teaser released in May 2021, it featured pixel art with a rather small resolution, similar to many of the other HD2D titles, while characters in the final release version are much higher res, making the game feel a bit less retro. The same also goes for the environment, featuring something more akin to hand-painted texture rather than pixel art. I personally much prefer the original look Team Asano developed together with Amata Games before switching developers to Artdink. But according to reviews, many people are really into the new look and I think it comes down to personal preference. While it comes to the core gameplay, the remake mostly respects the original games while adding some modernizations, such as the ability to change the battle speed and a new playable class through the Monster Wrangler. The Dragon Quest series as a whole had a huge impact on the entire JRPG genre, and if you missed out on the originals, now might be a good time to catch up with these 8D 2D remasters, since it was also announced that Dragon Quest 1 and 2 are in development with Unreal Engine. Even though this game was created through a cooperation of two professional studios, and as indie devs we couldn't ever create anything at a similar scope, there are still aspects of it that we can get motivated by and take inspiration from. The HD 2D art style is actually quite achievable even as a solo developer if you know what settings you need to use, and I put quite a lot of research time into this. As a result, I created the Ultimate 2D Top-Down Unreal Engine course, which is a 17-hour course teaching you how to make three different top-down games in Unreal, with the last one being a 2D-3D hybrid with a similar look to this. 
you can check it out from the discount link in the description. Number 2 Obama is a third-person action-adventure with bullet hell elements created with Unreal Engine. And this is just a great example of how to take your student project to the next level by releasing it on Steam for free instead of just having it rot away on your hard drive. And if you've developed any games with Unreal, you should be familiar with the majority of the free assets used here. It uses the character from the official Your First Hour in Unreal Engine 5.0 course by the GOAT Matthew Wattstein, and many of the maps are from the permanently free collection and I've also used some of these for my games and tutorials. And while the wild mix of art styles definitely makes the game feel cheap and gives it strong student project vibes, there are some redeeming factors about the gameplay and it currently has very positive reviews on Steam. Surprisingly, it even features online multiplayer and there's even an achievement for playing with former President Barack Obama. Joking aside, putting a game out on Steam even for free and having people play and review it can make it look a lot more legit as a portfolio project. It will also teach you the skills of finishing and marketing a game, rather than just polishing up mechanics for years on end without actually putting anything out to the public. Number 1 The first title in the Bioshock series was crowned a masterpiece when it released in 2007, and it was created using Unreal Engine 2.5. Now you might be wondering why I put such an old AAA title on this list, and I read your feedback in my first video with some viewers saying I should only cover indie games. But I do believe there's a lot to be gained by looking back at the rich history of Unreal and for me personally it's very motivating to see how bigger studios utilized it. I find it quite inspiring and motivating to see games that reach millions of people being created with a similar toolset we now all have access to for free. And honestly, I just love this game and it has a really interesting backstory in terms of development, so I just want to talk about it. By the time Bioshock released, Unreal Engine 3 was already out and impressive titles such as Unreal Tournament 3 and Gears of War set a new standard for graphics. Despite having been created with Unreal 2.5, which is a much earlier version, Bioshock was able to compete with these titles when it came to graphical prowess. This was made possible through custom engine modifications by the development team and backporting shader technology from Unreal Engine 3. Back then you'd have to be a licensed partner to do so, but nowadays we all have access to Unreal Engine source code, and even though it's quite challenging to make changes, you absolutely could add things to the engine for your specific use case. I also want to mention that the entire Bioshock series up until this point was created using different versions of Unreal. So if you're a fan of this series, I hope hearing that motivates you at least a little bit. As always, thanks to my awesome patrons.